other few more markers. There is currently not enough evidence to support the routine clinical use of other tumor markers such as human epididymis protein 4 or HE4, carcinoembryonic antigen or CEA, CDX2, cancer antigen 72-4, cancer antigen 19-9, alpha fetoprotein, lactate dehydrogenase or LDH, or beta-human chorionic gonadotrophin or beta-HCG to assess the risk of malignancy in postmenopausal ovarian cysts. HE4 or human epididymis protein 4. HE4 is a glycoprotein found in epididymal epithelium. Increase your room HE4 levels and expression of the HE4 or WFDC2 gene occurs in ovarian cancer as well as in lung, pancreas, breast, bladder or urethral transitional cell and endometrial cancers. HE4 is not increased in endometriosis and has fewer false positive results with benign disease compared with CA125. There are some preliminary data suggesting that HE4 is more sensitive and specific than serum CA125 for the diagnosis of ovarian cancer. However, HE4 is not in routine clinical use and the data on HE4 are not substantial enough to enable it to be recommended routinely instead of or in addition to serum CA125 at the time of writing of this guideline. Carcinoembryonic antigen or CEA, CDX2, cancer antigen 72-4 or CA72-4, cancer antigen 19-9, or CA19-9, alpha fetoprotein, lactate dehydrogenase or LDH, and beta-human chorionic gonadotrophin or beta-HCG. There is not enough evidence to suggest that panels including multiple tumor markers offer any further advantage in the initial assessment of ovarian cysts in postmenopausal women. All of these markers show low sensitivity and wide variation in a specificity when used in isolation or in combination with CA125. What imaging should be employed in the assessment of ovarian cysts in postmenopausal women? What is the role of ultrasound scanning in categorizing cysts? A transvaginal pelvic ultrasound is the single most effective way of evaluating ovarian cysts in postmenopausal women. Transabdominal ultrasound should not be used in isolation. It should be used to provide supplementary information to transvaginal ultrasound, particularly when an ovarian cyst is large or beyond the field of view of transvaginal ultrasound. On transvaginal scanning, the morphological description and subjective assessment of the ultrasound features should be clearly documented to allow calculation of the risk of malignancy. Transvaginal ultrasound scans should be performed using multi-frequency probes by trained clinicians with expertise in gynecological imaging. On transvaginal ultrasound, a simple cyst is associated with five features, round or oval shape, thin or imperceptible wall, posterior acoustic enhancement, anechoic fluid, and absence of septations or nodules. Characterization of an adnexal mass as a simple cyst is important for management. Ultrasound identification of a simple cyst establishes a benign process in 95-99% to of postmenopausal women. An ovarian cyst is defined as complex in the presence of one or more features. Complete septation, for example, multilocular cyst, solid nodules, and papillary projections. These are worrying features associated with an increased incidence of malignancy, 8% for multilocular and 36-39% to for lesions with solid elements. A detailed ovarian cyst classification system has been developed 
by the consensus group from the International Ovarian Tumor Analysis or IOTA group. It is worth noting that this group included in their definition of a unilocular cyst minor inner abnormalities such as an incomplete septum or less than 3 mm papilla. Transabdominal and transvaginal scanning are complementary because of the improved resolution of transvaginal ultrasound, it should be used whenever possible and is recommended as a first-line imaging modality for assessing ovarian cysts in postmenopausal women. When an ovarian cyst is large or beyond the field of view of transvaginal sonography, transabdominal ultrasound is recommended. Subjective assessment by ultrasound remains valuable in discriminating malignant from benign ovarian masses. Pattern recognition of specific ultrasound findings with more complex scoring systems can produce sensitivity and specificity equivalent to logistic regression models. A study has shown that transvaginal ultrasound may help characterize benign and malignant cysts with a sensitivity of 89% and a specificity of 73% when using a morphology index. The findings, however, should be correlated with the history and laboratory tests. A more recent study has shown that use of a more specific gynecologic imaging reporting and data system, or GIRADS, scoring may increase the sensitivity to 99.1% and specificity to 85.9%. In postmenopausal women, simple cysts are seen with a frequency of 5 to 17% and are not related to hormonal therapy or time since onset of menopause, although some have observed decreasing frequency with time after the onset of menopause. In a two-year follow-up study of asymptomatic postmenopausal women with simple cysts smaller than 5 cm, these cysts were shown to disappear 53%, remain static 28%, enlarge 11%, decrease 3%, or fluctuate in size 6%. Evidence from larger screening studies found a higher rate of resolution of unilocular cysts at 70%, with only complex cysts having an increased risk of malignancy. Adnexal cysts, 5 cm or smaller, in postmenopausal women are rarely malignant. Postmenopausal ovarian cysts with a solid component include benign ovarian tumors such as SAM teratomas, cyst adenomas, cyst adenofibromas, malignant ovarian tumors, primary and metastatic, or a torted ovary. Although ultrasound may not unequivocally distinguish malignant from benign cyst, it provides useful information. The presence of neural nodules or septations, especially with vascular flow, suggests that the ovarian cyst is malignant. However, it is important to note that no single ultrasound finding differentiates categorically between benign and malignant ovarian masses. What is the role of Doppler and three-dimensional ultrasound studies? Color flow Doppler studies are not essential for the routine initial assessment of ovarian cysts in postmenopausal women. Spectral and pulse Doppler indices should not be used routinely. Resistive index, pulsatility index, peak systolic velocity, time average maximum velocity to differentiate benign from malignant ovarian cysts as their use has not been associated with significant improvement in diagnostic accuracy over morphologic assessment by ultrasound scan. Three-dimensional ultrasound morphologic assessment does not appear to improve the diagnosis of complex ovarian cysts and its routine use is not recommended in the assessment of postmenopausal ovarian cysts. Malignant masses generally demonstrate neovascularity with abnormal branching patterns or vessel morphology. These neovessels have lower resistance flow than native ovarian vessels. Hence, sonographic evaluation 
using a combination of morphologic assessment and color flow or power Doppler imaging to detect abnormal blood flow has been proposed to assess suspicious ovarian cysts for the risk of malignancy in some studies. The combined use of transvaginal ultrasound with power Doppler flow mapping has been shown in the research setting to improve sensitivity and specificity compared with the use of transvaginal ultrasound alone, particularly in complex cases. Such tests are not universally available and cannot be recommended for the routine initial assessment of ovarian cysts in postmenopausal women. What is the role of CT scan, MRI, and other cross-sectional imaging? CT, MRI, and positron emission tomography, or PET CT scans, are not recommended for the initial evaluation of ovarian cysts in postmenopausal women. Their initial routine use cannot yet be recommended. However, these additional imaging modalities may have a place in the evaluation of more complex lesions or in the setting of suspected metastatic spread. CT scan or computed tomography scan. CT should not be used routinely as a primary imaging tool for the initial assessment of ovarian cysts in postmenopausal women because of its low specificity, its limited assessment of ovarian internal morphology, and its use of ionizing radiation. If, from the clinical picture, ultrasonographic findings and tumor markers, malignant disease is suspected, a CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis should be arranged with onward referral to a gynecological oncology multidisciplinary team. Currently, the best use of CT imaging is not to detect and characterize pelvic masses, but to evaluate the abdomen for metastases when a malignant cyst is suspected based on transvaginal ultrasound images, examination, and serum markers. CT is useful in selected cases when a non-gynecologic origin of an adnexal cyst is suspected, for example, other non-gynecological retroperitoneal cystic masses. A CT scan can detect omental metastases, peritoneal implants, pelvic or paraaortic lymph node enlargement, hepatic metastases, obstructive uropathy, and possibly an alternate primary cancer site, including pancreas or colon. CT scan may be indicated to stage a suspected primary ovarian cancer or to identify the primary intra-abdominal cancer, for example, colon, gastric, and pancreatic with suspected ovarian metastases. MRI or Magnetic Resonance Imaging MRI should not be used routinely as a primary imaging tool for the initial assessment of ovarian cysts in postmenopausal women. MRI should be used as a second-line imaging modality for the characterization of indeterminate ovarian cysts when ultrasound is inconclusive. While assessment with MRI can improve overall sensitivity and specificity of ovarian cyst characterization, there are inherent limitations to the more widespread use of MRI which preclude its routine use over transvaginal ultrasonography. These are both institutional, for example, high cost, more restricted availability, and patient-related restrictions. MRI is contraindicated in certain patients, for example, with cardiac pacemaker, cochlear implants, and can have reduced acceptance by some patients, for example, those with claustropovia. MRI should be considered for characterization of indeterminate adnexal cysts with identification of enhancing vegetations in cystic masses and the presence of ascites being the best indicators of malignancy. Further characterization by MRI is also of value where an alternative diagnosis to an ovarian neoplasm is thought more likely or if anatomically the ovarian origin of a pelvic cyst is in doubt. MRI is a valuable problem-solving tool 
when ultrasound is inconclusive or limited due to body habitus. MRI of the sonographically indeterminate adnexal mass can be used to guide patient care and reduce the cost of further management. Women who clinically have a low risk of malignancy but have complex lesions on ultrasound scan are the ones who will most likely benefit from contrast-enhanced MRI. A meta-analysis which compared the incremental value of a second test to evaluate an indeterminate adnexal mass on ultrasound found that contrast-enhanced MRI provided a greater certainty of ovarian cancer diagnosis compared with CT, Doppler ultrasound, or MRI without contrast. The documented major contribution of MRI in adnexal mass evaluation is its specificity as it can provide a confident diagnosis of many benign adnexal lesions. Functional MR sequences such as diffusion-weighted imaging or DWI together with its quantitative derivative, an apparent diffusion coefficient, or ADC map, and dynamic contrast-enhanced imaging can be added to conventional sequences.